Hello and welcome to this recorded church service for care homes in Liberton Kirk Parish. And it's mainly for our care home residents, but if you are not in that category, you are equally welcome to join us. Because we're not allowed to come in to be with you in person to do a service in real life, we've recorded this short video, this short service for you to watch whenever it's convenient to yourself. And we hope that you will be blessed by it. My name is Fiona Devoy, and I'm a lay preacher in the Church of Scotland. I've done previous recordings, so you might remember my face. And today, can I just say that our music is recorded from the internet, and I hope that you will join in if you are able. Our first hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Let's turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, who created us out of love, we are truly thankful for the way we can come together today as your people to worship and praise you for all your goodness to us. You are the God who loves us with a steadfast love and who wants to give us many good things in life. And with grateful hearts, we come to praise you for the love that constantly surrounds us, for all the blessings of our lives, and for the salvation we have in Jesus. And forgive us, Lord, all the times when we have failed to love you to the best of our abilities, and when we have failed to love our neighbours as you have asked us to. And you are always ready to forgive us when we are truly sorry, and so we can come to you today knowing we are loved and accepted just as we are. Open our hearts to you today, so that we can hear what you want to teach us and bless us in our time together. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for our sakes. Amen. And our second hymn is one that reminds us of how close Jesus is to us in our everyday lives. It's Christ be beside me.
Although we are nearly at the end of summer, we've had some very good weather recently. And yesterday, my husband and I decided to make the best of it, and we took a day off from our usual activities to go down to the beach at Portobello. And it was pretty crowded when we got there. Lots of other people had had the same idea. But we got part, and we took a walk along the promenade among all the families and the dogs and the cyclists and the couples walking hand in hand. And some of the cafes had even put out tables and chairs for people to sit and eat. And there were even a couple of buskers singing songs. And it reminded me a lot of my childhood when going to the seaside was what people did in the summer rather than flying off to Spain. People went to Millport or Rossi or Fife for their annual holiday. And it was great then to watch the passing crowd and we even had some ice cream and a fish supper. Being down by the water on a lovely day can be really relaxing. And it reminded me of a story in the Bible when the disciples took a day out to relax from a stressful time by going fishing. And our story is in the book of John, the Gospel of John, and it takes place after Jesus has risen from the dead and appeared to the disciples in the upper room. But they're at a bit of a loose end because they're not quite sure what's going to happen next. So here's our story from John's Gospel. Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee, and this is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they all went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, hey there, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped it off for work. He jumped into the water and he headed to shore. The other stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from there. And when they arrived, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore, and there were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. And this was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Amen. So the disciples had gone off fishing in their boat and they met Jesus who calls to them from the beach. And Peter is so desperate to meet him again. He doesn't wait for the boat to land, but he jumps down and he wades ashore. And they eventually all land and they have a bit of a barbecue with some grilled fish. Yet Peter is not quite at ease because this is the first time he has had a chance to speak to Jesus on his own about something he has done that he is deeply ashamed of. And if you remember, the last time he spoke to Jesus privately was at the Last Supper when Jesus said, you're going to betray me. And Peter said, no, no, Lord, not me. I'd never do such a thing. But of course, when it came to the crunch, Peter denied ever knowing Jesus. And this has been on his conscience all that time. So there's a difficult conversation to be had. And Jesus asks him if he loves him. Peter says, yes, he does very much. And Jesus shows that he has forgiven him by entrusting him with the care of the other disciples. Feed my sheep, he says, look after the others, take care of them. And Jesus doesn't say, oh, well, I might forgive you eventually, but it will take a long time to forget and to get over. And I'm certainly not going to trust you with anything important ever again. No, Jesus doesn't say any of that. He forgives him without any recriminations or bad feeling. And that is how he deals, not just with Peter, but with us too. 
Every one of us has let ourselves down. Every one of us has let other people down and we've let God down because we have failed to be the good and loving people he has designed us to be. Yet we can come and we can sit and eat with him knowing that we are loved and forgiven and even trusted to go and serve him again. And where else in life do we receive grace like that? Who else accepts us despite our constant feelings? Quite often we can't for even forgive ourselves, but God does. And he does it out of his great love. And our next song is all about that great love. It's quite a modern one. So if you don't know it, just sit and enjoy the words and the tune. It's called Here is Love vast as the ocean. Let's turn to the Lord with our prayers for the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the times when we have had to ask your forgiveness for what we have done, just as Peter did in our story today. Thank you that you never turn your back on us, no matter what we have done, and teach us in our turn to forgive others, just as you forgive us our many faults and failings. And thank you, Lord, for the many good things you give us in our lives, our good food, our comfortable homes, and people to care for us. And let us never take these things for granted. And we thank you for our families and our neighbours and all who care for us in our everyday living. And we ask forgiveness for all the times when we have been angry or unkind or have not appreciated their help. Teach us to treat everyone as you treat us with acceptance and patience. And Lord, we pray for all those in our world who are so poor, we do not even have the basics of life. And let us never forget their plight. And we ask you to provide for all those in need as you care for us. And we remember too, all those who are sick at home or in hospital and ask for your healing for them, especially for those suffering in the COVID pandemic. And we ask that you will be especially close to all who have recently been bereaved and comfort them in their loss. And we remember all those we love who have passed on and are now with you in glory. Thank you for their lives and for the hope we have that we shall be united again with them one day. And we ask your blessing on all these prayers as we say together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our final hymn is also all about the sea and it's my husband David's 
favourite hymn because it reminds him of his years in the boys' brigade when he was a wee lad. And it's, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? And as we come to the end of our service today, let's bow our heads and ask for God's blessing on us. Let us go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And as we go, may God the Father make us holy in his love. May God the Son enrich us with his grace. May God the Holy Spirit strengthen us with joy. And may the Lord bless us and keep us now and always in eternal life. Amen. <laughs>